Hello once again, it's Mr. Peach, your YouTube shop teacher, and this is episode number 52 of my This and That series. Let's start out with a gift box that I received from my gunsmith friend, Dave Pigeon. He sent along a couple of these nice caps with a logo that uh, is pretty interesting. And appreciate that. Thank you, Dave, for all of this. But also in here, he always sends me uh, some of these small calendars. I like these. They're just perfect to put on the dashboard of the car or, or your toolbox or something like that. And there's uh, Dave Pigeon's gun shop uh, information. What else do we have in here? Well, he sent this little wrench here. And he said, give it to Henry. So Henry's got a little adjustable wrench now. <laughs> I'll save that for a year or two before I give it to him. Uh, this is a tube of uh, called Vitaflux by Imperial. Reduces dross and vitalizes metal. He says he uses this when he melts lead to reduce the dross. So I'll have to try that. And then finally here, he sent this uh, flashlight and man is it bright. Some of these LED lights are so bright that they're almost frightening. And uh, well, there's all kinds of other doodads here. You know, we got the compass, we got the... Uh, I don't know what that's for. To break out your windshield or something, to escape. And uh, just all kinds of things here. Oh, it'll change colors, it'll change intensity, it'll signal the police, do all kinds of things. Thank you, Dave. And Dave is the man that gave me the Starrett cap last year. You may remember that. I appreciate that. And Dave's had kind of a rough year. He's been sick most of the year, and we wish him a good recovery and the best of health. This is my Christmas present from my daughter and her husband Russ. You have met them at the meet and greet. It's a laser cutout, about 24 inches by 24 inches. I'll hang it up in my garage. Thank you, Gene and Russ. I'm still getting a lot of inquiries over these beautiful little fine point pens that you see me use all the time. And people are saying, uh, where do you get these? What are they called? Well, these were a gift uh, to me from uh, Doug Bollinger, actually a, a year ago. And there is the name again. They come in different colors, and I believe you can get them on Amazon or do a search for them. They're really great. This one I've been using for a whole year and it's still not dry. And thank you to uh, Doug for those. Tim Turner from Hound Dog Machining sent along a care package for these, God, I don't know, this is three quarter inch Delrin, just a wonderful material to work with, and there's a whole bunch of pieces of that, and I can't wait to start using that. If you've never used Delrin, you know, it's just uh, really a neat material. It machines just beautifully. So thank you to uh, Tim for that, and remember Tim runs Hound Dog Machinery, which makes, let me show you real quickly. His company, Hound Dog Machining, makes these, I call them halo rings, that fit around the spindle of the Bridgeport Mill and really light up the work. And uh, I use that all the time. You'll see that in my videos. And there is his logo. You may remember my 10-part series on making the float lock vise. Well, Jay Miller made a real nice sample of this and sent me a couple pictures, and there it is. Thanks, Jay. And there it is again. And there's a few of the parts. Some of you may remember my good friend Craig Heath from down in Bushnell, Illinois, and he is the one that uh, operates, or I should say uh, runs the power station down there, and I did a video on that. I'll put a link here in the video down at the bottom. Check that out if you haven't already seen that, but just a great guy. 
But in Bushnell, besides the power plant, there is the Vaughn and Bushnell Hammer Factory. And I, that is in that video also, a tour of that. But Vaughn and Bushnell bought out the Dasco Company, and many of you will remember that. And so now they're in full production here on their chisels and punches, all American made. And uh, look at there's about a, what, a 10-piece set that he sent me with uh, pin punches, center punches, uh, three chisels, and, a, and an awl. So I'm really going to enjoy using those, but look what else came in that box. Vaughn and Bushnell, their 150th anniversary, fifth generation. Well, you know, I think uh, <laughs> Craig, he's such a good guy. I talk to him on the phone all the time. There's a 16 ounce Vaughn and Bushnell limited edition. Made in the USA, you know. And he included a three quarter inch chisel in there as well. I don't know. You suppose Craig thinks that I'm a hammer and chisel mechanic? <laughs> Thank you ever so much to uh, Vaughn and Bushnell and Craig Heath, and he sent these up here uh, over Christmas for me. Talk to you soon, Craig. I am sure you have seen me show this book in other videos. It's a machine shop book uh, aimed at the high school market. <clears throat> Older, all printed in the 60s, but anyway, it's now available free on Google. Now why am I telling you this? Because at the back of the book there's quite a few good machine shop projects. Some of them I have made. And there's a sample of a couple of the projects. Brad Bell is the one that sent me this link, but anyway my tips number, what is it, uh, 362, how to make a wiggler, is based on what you see in that book. And right here is the link for finding that book free online. The only problem is you cannot print out those pages that I am aware of anyway, so that you could easily print out one of those uh, blueprints. Thank you, Brad. Can you stand for me to talk about Peterson products real briefly now? In the last issue, I showed you this C-clamp, which was one of ours. And, uh, of course, many people were critical that I say, why would you give that kid a C-? minus?" Well, you know, I never failed a kid on his projects if he turned it in, no matter how bad it was, unless he stole it and they got an F. But, uh, all right, my friend Russ, I was down in his basement the other day, and he has some of the projects left from the olden days because he taught right next to me there. And I'd give them, sometimes the kids didn't want their projects, they'd leave them lay. So that's how we ended up with some of these. But you'll see I was quite generous on this one, a C plus. But what I really wanted to show you here, I think I mentioned to you that this was the weak spot. And what would happen sometimes is the kids, for the lack of vices, would clamp this to the corner of the bench while they're doing their filing and finishing. And sometimes it broke off right here because they didn't know their own strength. They're like baby Huey, you know at that age. But this was one of the later versions where I had filled this in, I suppose, with body putty on the pattern and uh, to strengthen it a little bit. And two, I had a match plate that had uh, two of these on there so we could cast two at the same time. Well, what's this other one doing here? Well, Russ had that one also. Jim Eplin, that must have been one of the first years I was there. Boy, was he, he was a good kid. Oh, he got an A minus. But that is uh, before, let's see, BPP, before Peterson Products. So this is a pattern I believe I made when I was in junior college. And we made that for several years until the inaugural run of Peterson Products. Okay, who cares about that? But look what else Russ had in his basement. One of the original arbor presses from Peterson Products. And I will talk about that in the next issue. Gordon Ward, and he's either from uh, Arizona or Arkansas. The zip code is AR. I think that's Arkansas. 
But anyway, he's got some pretty good videos under that name, Soatman. So check those out, and thank you for the sticker, and do not get discouraged, Gordon. This is a preview of a project coming soon here. We're going to call these peat blocks, so do a search when available. And these are adjustable blocks for whatever height you need in regards to clamping your work with this type of clamp and uh, the bolts. So watch for that. Very recently I did a video on the bore set. These are the patent drawings, interestingly enough, for that product. I had trouble finding the patent because it simply said patent pending on the actual product. But there it is. And thank you to that viewer for sending that link to me. Be sure and watch the whole video because I've been putting a lot of still pictures near the end. Oh, what a controversy this has become over the years. And can you bear with me while I talk about adjustable crescent wrenches just a little bit in regards to that? These are a couple older crescent wrenches, but on some of the newer ones, and I'm not sure just how old this one is, but there's actually an arrow on the handle telling you which way to use it. And on the back side, the arrow, of course, goes like that. Okay, and while I'm at it, let's talk real briefly about this. Here's two 8-inch crescent wrenches. This is a Crest alloy. I don't know how old it is, but it weighs 197 grams. But this newer one, look at how thick and cloddy it seems to be in comparison and weighs 272 grams. So why did they increase the weight and size? And this is US, USA made. Slightly different pattern. Still a nice looking wrench though. Well, I made up this teaching aid just to illustrate something to you. And I think you realize that most open-end wrenches are at a 15 degree angle so that when you make this turn, then you can take it off and put it on like this. You all knew that. But why is it then that with a Crescent wrench they are also at 15 degrees and you can turn it one way and then you have to do it backwards after you flip it over. So I made a, a little bit larger one here. So we would go like that and then when we flip it over we are going the wrong way according to the arrows. Let me do it with this one. Look at the arrow. Like that, and now when I flip it over, you can see that the arrow is going to point the wrong way. So I am violating everything that we learned about crescent wrenches. Now figure that out. I don't think it matters one bit myself. Yesterday after dark, the UPS truck rolled into the driveway and dropped off a box. And it was from Mike Epstein out in California who runs Flame Enterprises Incorporated. Thank you, Mike. This was really neat. But look at it in this beautiful little brown and sharp box is a revolution counter, speed counter, with a couple tips, the original tips. And this is just so beautiful. It needed a little oiling, but now it works perfectly. And I'm going to show this in uh, another video. But on the back, you got a couple little windows. This is quite different from the Starrett. I really like the looks and the feel of it. And the handle here is insulated electrically. 
isolated from the body here so in case you're near oh I don't know uh, live wiring or something and that's brown and sharp number seven oh I can't even read it 748 let me show you a picture of that in the old brown and sharp book I don't know if they still offer this well brown and sharps out of business you know the union busted them there's the patent number if you want to look this up and it's just one page of drawings for as complex as it is this brown and sharp book was printed about six months before Pearl Harbor and there it is at that time six dollars and seventy five cents which would have been pretty expensive in the case is an extra buck and a half how dare they I doubt if it was a beautiful wood one like I just showed you well that completes this edition of this and that thank you for watching be sure and watch my other videos this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.